What system do you see perform better in your tests? The current model in the United States is to build, destroy, and then rebuild. We believe in research is, is the solution of every, uh, every, every problem. So they use different tests to sell to Canada? I think they're just trying to turn over that to the insurance companies. Our motto is build, sustain, and survive. All right, today, very special episode on Roofing Insights. We do what we do best, stirring the pot in the roofing industry. Topic today is wind warranties. We're gonna be calling out some misleading, maybe even false statements by some manufacturers. I know it's a controversial topic. I know a lot of you have been very skeptical about manufacturer warranty promises, but we're gonna discuss with people who are 10 times smarter than me Real engineers, people who actually know what they're talking about when it comes to wind testing, people who represent Western Michigan University. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. First, I want you to introduce yourself to the channel and what exactly you do. What's your titles for Western Michigan University? Yeah, my name is Bilal Al Hawande. I am a research uh, associate at Bronco Construction Research Center that belongs to Western Michigan University. This is my partner. I'm Brian Montgomery. I'm the director of the Research Center uh, at Western Michigan University. And we are a, 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 a department that is housed within the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So you're, you represent real engineers and you test shingles, you test building products for wind resistance? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we basically uh, evaluate the uh, whole roofing system uh, starting from the B deck and all the components above it. And uh, that is uh, gonna be uh, tested or evaluated under realistic dynamic wind uplift load. So uh, that's what we believe. Uh, that's the dynamic nature of the wind needs to be presented and considered in any kind of uh, uh, wind evaluation. Your test is very different and it's regulated by the government pretty much to test the roofing products. Every building in America has roof above the building, right? And there is a marketing promise. There is a promise to the consumer that this will last. I mean, we have Miami, Dayton County, you know, like probably one of the strictest rules and even those fails and they don't fail at 150, 180. They fail sometimes 30, 40 winds. Why, like, what, what goes behind testing and how can we affect the original test? Well, I'll take the high, high level is, is that the load protocol for the dynamic wind uplift test was developed uh, as a Canadian standard. There is no American standard. So these companies uh, employ that test methodology when they wish to sell their products in, to Canada. Uh, the static or monotonic test is for every other place in the United States. And so, um, so, so can you to, repeat that? So they use different tests to sell to Canada? Correct. To certify their product to sell in Canada, it has to meet the dynamic CSA 123 uh, load protocol or dynamic wind uplift test. If they want to sell the same product to Miami-Dade or someplace in Indiana, then a static or monotonic test where they hold a pressure for 15, 20 minutes is wow. sufficient. So the testing is higher, like higher standard. It's a harder test for Canada than Miami. It is not a just higher standard. It's something that represents or simulate all the uh, required factors of the uh, wind effects. So as an example, if you test the system based on the static, you won't have the fatigue effects as an important factor. That's most of the observations after hurricanes damages found that the roofing system in general failed at a load less than the wind design load. That's will bring in a question, why? I mean, I designed my system up to this load and the wind hit with the pressure less than that load. Why I have, I have my product just failed? The current model in the United States is to build, destroy, and then rebuild. And many times, if not all the time, 
uh, the rebuilding effort is in the exact same place that the destruction occurred, wow. and it's the exact same design that was the original structure. And that just doesn't make sense to me or anyone else that I talk to. Um, it's good for manufacturers. It's good for manufacturers, but our motto is build, sustain, and survive because we should always, especially in academia, uh, strive to increase the resiliency or the longevity or the survivability of some of these systems. After hurricane, I believe in Panama City, like four, I believe it's about four years ago, you could see uh, New York Times made a story. Uh, everybody remembers that one house with a metal, standing seam metal that every, Everyone around was gone. Every building was destroyed. And this one house stood still. A metal roof was built different, and it has a metal roof in it. And everybody's like, well, they built that house. How did they do it? So they interviewed them. They interviewed the architect, or they went back and say, why everybody around is gone. If you look at aerial footage, there's one house standing still with a standing metal, uh, you know, metal roof. And every, whoever have asphalt shingles and typical siding, typical framing it was gone. But this one house was different. And that's what I was getting at. What, what system do you see perform better in your tests? Um, we are doing a flat roof system. You're so only doing flat just, roof? Yeah, this, 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 uh, this chamber is to, uh, this chamber designs to apply this protocol to low slope roof buildings. Will you be flat... extending to? Uh, the, I mean, the, the load protocol, the cycles load, has been uh, generated or developed based on the flat roof type. Because this is a long, long time process, starting from uh, capturing the pressure uh, on, on the flat roof with different angle attack uh, by doing a lot of wind tunnel testing and have those pressure back and then analyze the data and convert those uh, goes to a cycle cycles so I hope I hope in the future somebody will come up with a uh, another method uh, maybe we, we we still thinking about we have a lot of thoughts about how to develop that or convert that to the residential buildings uh, with different shape gable or whatever so but now we're just focusing on the in the in the, in, in the industrial you know uh, warehouses and all of that and we're also transitioning into looking at specific geometries that are fastened on top of the roof, such as solar panels or hot water tanks, etc. Because especially in the case of a solar panel that's inclined at 40 degrees, that's going to exacerbate the uplifting forces and the fatigue loading uh, in some of these low slope. Is it fair to say that most products in your experience fail, uh, like your test from um, was stated the values that yeah unfortunately we we depress a lot of people around sure, sure. yeah because they 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 came to us oh like they're really proud of about their products and they did a lot of and they fail in your aesthetic test. tests and once they know they don't go as long as, as they long think as they, they think they should and uh i mean we 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 we, we tell the truth here but in reality, that's what they're going to experience in the next exactly. hurricane, next storm. That's, that's what we, so if they want to see what's going to happen in the real life condition, yep. I think what's really happening here is manufacturers, they have margin of error, they have uh, claims departments. So if they sell the product and it will fail, it's still a percentage of the sales. So they would rather deal with the claims later than to fix and invest in a different process now that will affect the sales. So they would rather have a failure rate and a claim rate maybe, because for them it's like, I, I talked to a few manufacturers, they say it's 1% or 1.5% or half percent, it's a very small margin. So even if they sell something they know they're gonna fail, it's cheaper for them to deal with the claims after the fact than to go and reinvest in the I think they're just trying to turn over that to the insurance companies. Sure. So the insurance companies the insurance will... company is paying for it. Exactly. So that's that's that kind insurance of insurance company must love you. Yes. So that's I mean we had a couple of uh, really good relationships with, uh, with the insurance companies, but you know once the pandemic hit, uh, I mean uh, most of our uh, plans just got delayed. So yeah, I mean uh, insurance companies they have an IBHS uh, system, a center. They do uh, their own testing, but they don't still have this uh, capability to do that dynamic. So insurance company would love to 
uh, know exactly what is the real uh, performance of the system under wind conditions, not just steady condition. Because you, you, you are offering money to those people if it's got failed under uh, abnormal condition, right? You can also look at it from another angle of a consumer uh, instead of a supplier, but a consumer. So if you're a large distribution company that has millions of square foot in every state in the like United States, well, I won't mention any, but something along those lines, you could uh, mandate that the roofing uh, application would be tested at a dynamic versus a static because that you're going to own the building, not the, not the supplier. You, and so it's like buying a car, higher quality versus lower quality. It's up to you. Absolutely. We believe in research is, is the solution of every, uh, every, every problem. We uh, are, are, are in a different environment than most of, well, all private laboratories because we're in an academic setting. So we are authorized to provide uh, a level of forensic analysis uh, where we d actually dig deep and to try to find uh, where in the system failed and what was fatigued first and what component exacerbated the whole system failure. Much like when a plane crashes, there's, a, there's an evaluation and you find that the, that the crack between the rivets was the reason why the, it failed. So we're able to dig deep, a lot deeper than just like Bilal said, either a pass or fail certification. We want to understand why and what components failed, when they failed, and, uh, and at that level of detail. Give one advice to roofing manufacturers who are watching this channel. You first. Uh, you said as an advice? advice think recommendation. Uh, I would say it's, it's the time now to turn over to, uh, to evaluate the roofing uh, uh, system under realistic wind loads, not just uh, uh, some, some, I would say, not unrelated conditions like static or all of that. I don't, I don't say static is completely, uh, doesn't give any insight about the roof behavior, maybe relatively to different, like, uh, com different levels. But if you're gonna compare that to the real case, I don't think this is so related. So I would advise them to come uh, to Western Bronco Construction Research Center. Uh, we, offer, uh, uh, we offer a lot of services, like you don't need to come and build your specimen and sit two days to test your specimen. We have a secure camera system so you can watch your test and provide you the whole uh, a comprehensive technical report. And you, you, you need to know about your products, really, like the real, what is the real behavior of my product? Otherwise, it's just kind of, uh, uh, it's just kind of, uh, I would Best say, guess. yeah, guess, yeah. Just kind of a guess. My answer to that question would be to keep an open mind. Uh, we are not in competition with you. We would like to see you do your own testing and let us do your really crazy ideas, you're really crazy research and development testing because those innovative ideas will translate into dual use products or longer lasting products, which affects every one of us because we all live uh, under a roof. So let's try to increase the longevity of that system. I'm pretty sure this video put some wind pressure on the roofing manufacturers. Um, if you're the roofer, I want you to comment below what you think about wind warranties. I'm pretty sure you've seen it failed. I'm pretty sure if you're in the storm markets, you've seen roofs blown away, not because of um, mistakes by installers, but the product failures because they just did not live up to their marketing promise. Comment below if you've experienced it. Comment below who makes the best roofing system for wind uplift. I want to hear from you guys. Give it a like if you like this content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Awesome, guys. Thank you. That's fantastic. Awesome.